Samsung don't innovate anymore. At least, that's what tech Twitter would have you believe. It's fair to say, since introducing the foldables, Samsung have taken their foot off the gas. That's a very surface level take. One that doesn't really give you the overall widened view of the finer details that Samsung are innovating. They are sweating over the little stuff to give the consumer the best experience possible. Today, we're going to put a lens on how Samsung still innovate, but also how they've shifted the focus of their innovation to ensure you get the best experience you can. Let's go. It's fair to say that Samsung have pioneered a lot over the years. I asked you on my communities tab what you liked about Samsung's history of innovation. Let's read out some of the ones that I got in. At Katrina White said that loves the S Pen, its functionality and what it's brought. You can see the comment on the screen there. I would 100% agree. It's a massive innovation in the smartphone world, especially the integrated S Pen, the one that's housed in the phone and the device itself. There is no brand that has been able to successfully replicate what the S Pen can do on any level. At Falkenberg Marquez loved the note range in general when Samsung introduced it. The point made there about everyone doing small phones and Samsung coming in with big phones is classic Samsung. And they've done it again with the foldable range. Everyone was just doing slabs. Samsung come in with foldable technology. Jerome Gold and Asin Suresh both mentioned the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner, which Samsung brought in with the Galaxy S10. Up until that point, the only under display fingerprint technology that was in smartphones was optical. And optical had its disadvantages because it wasn't practical in all lighting scenarios. And ultrasonic came in and fixed that by being super fast, way more secure, and worked in pretty much every single environment that you could imagine. Mark T. Winter gave a massive list. Let's read out the list uh, from, from what he wrote. Foldables, curved displays, big screens, heart rate sensor on the back of the Galaxy S5 when that came in. That was a huge deal and very underrated and annoyingly, they dropped it when they brought the Note 10 range in. The IP rating, S5 again, was the first IP rated Samsung phone, IP67. We've already covered the S Pen, but in, he also mentions DeX. And the AMOLED display technology, that is 100% Samsung brought that to market and made it, popularized it and made it what it is today. I had all of these on my list as well. There are a couple other ones in there. Someone mentioned the eye scrolling from the Galaxy S4. Some of these Samsung brought to market way too early. But the point is Samsung were trying everything and they were innovating hardware and trying out features to see what consumers wanted and how they liked to use their technology. Thank you to everyone who sent in responses. Appreciate it. What's really cool about this list and everything that came in is the legacy that Samsung brought in to the smartphone world. Like that list there, wireless charging. 100% Samsung popularized wireless charging and made it what it is today. They've definitely brought some things that have just made it to be the mainstream smartphone experience that you should get out of your phone right now. That's not even mentioning all the software innovations that Samsung have brought out. Things like multi-window, things like edge panels. A lot of the features that exist on Android right now came from Samsung initially. So you have Samsung to thank for a lot of innovations, both on the hardware and the software front. This all comes about because Samsung loved to push the boundaries of hardware and innovation and technology. So what happened? Why has Samsung seemingly slowed down their innovation? Let's take a look, because there was a moment when everything changed. In 2020, Samsung reached an inflection point. In that year in itself, Samsung went huge. They released the S20 series, which had the S20 Ultra packing massive numbers. Also in that year, they had the Galaxy Z Flip that launched alongside the S20. So Samsung expanded their foldable range and introduced us to the Z series. What we know about the S20 is that it tanked. Now there are a number of reasons as to why that happened. A lot of it was centered around the timing of when it launched, happened to coincide with a global pandemic. So fair enough, that can happen. When you dig deeper, Samsung invested a lot of R&D into bringing cameras with high resolution sensors. They completely threw all of the specs at all three models, S20, S20 Plus, and S20 Ultra, all having Quad HD, Super AMOLED panels with 120 Hertz plus the curves on them. There was a lot of technology and a lot of hardware going into those phones and they cost a pretty penny as well. So the financial part of it also probably turned people off. Later on in that same year, Samsung released the next foldable, the Z Fold 2. And again, that was a massive step forward from what the fold, original fold was. Jump ahead to 2021 and Samsung went into refinement mode. They had to correct the mistakes from the S20 Ultra in particular. So the S21 Ultra definitely got 
an upgrade to a few things, mainly its camera system, where it got a three times and a 10 times, but that necessarily wasn't Samsung innovating, it was Samsung fixing and refining the experience from the year before. Because the S21 and S21 Plus, whilst they came with a fresh design, ultimately didn't bring too much on the hardware innovation front. And in fact, they dropped down a level. And that's where I guess you could say Samsung started to focus on different things. Because externally, it just looked as if Samsung was starting to play it safe. Refining things instead of overhauling and starting again. Since that point too, it just doesn't feel like Samsung are pushing boundaries as much as they used to. Especially when you look at some of the hardware coming out of the Chinese manufacturers. Xiaomi, your Huawei's, your Honors. They are going crazy with numbers and specs. Samsung either aren't willing to play that game or they're just not capable of it yet. I don't think the second part's the, the case. I think the first part is on a global scale. Samsung need to balance things out to give the best consumer experience possible. And that's what we're going to focus on next because let's break it down fold pretty much the same design language effectively since fold 2 flip others have seemingly done what samsung are only doing now before samsung and with the s23 series this year samsung pretty much kept a winning configuration from the s21 series and arguably from the s20 series before it to believe that surface level take though isn't quite doing justice to what samsung have done with their smartphone category in the last three years. Let's go there now. Hey, TM Rowe said it himself. You could see the article from Sam Mobile where they actually asked TM Rowe a really great question about the balance of hardware and software innovation and where Samsung's focus is going to be. TM Rowe gave a really, really good answer. Basically what he said was that Samsung absolutely have started to focus on the software because if you don't get the software right, customers aren't coming back. So they've done a really great job at bringing software to another level to make phones feel different, even though on the surface level, they look the same. But he did add a bit in there at the end that Samsung's known for their hardware innovation. So they're absolutely still going to ring true to that. It's just going to look a bit different to what we're normally used to seeing from them. If we look at the S series, let's break it down by flagship device. Some would argue that Samsung reached peak design with the Galaxy S10. And look, from a physicality point of view, all screen, punch hole cameras, triple camera setup, like it had pretty much everything and was the staple and the building blocks for where we are now. The S20 series came in and pushed hardware in new ways. Crazy RAM, crazy internal storage, massive cameras. That really took a different direction. Samsung now are focused on device experience and ecosystem. You can see with their development of One UI, they are incredibly refined with the software that is in play today. S series and the S23 Ultra is the perfect epitome of where Samsung's focus is. Yeah, there's really subtle design changes, but nothing that's groundbreakingly innovative. It's the software that actually has enhanced the hardware to make it feel like a massive step forward. You can see that when you compare S22 to S23, particularly in the ultra category. Samsung has done a great job in making it feel like a new phone, even though if you put them next to each other, you'd be really hard pressed to tell them apart. And this is where Samsung have changed their tact is they are innovating little tiny features to try and take advantage of consumer experience and ecosystem versus trying to upgrade hardware in isolation. Whilst other brands are spending a lot of effort in crazy cameras configurations and big massive displays that have these crazy brightness levels to really push boundaries with hardware, if their software experience or their ecosystem surrounding those products don't give the customer what they're after, the whole thing crumbles. You really need to build those foundations around your smartphone and Samsung's focus has started to go there. With the S23, the innovations came in other ways. Features like Adaptive Vision Booster, where you get the multiple layers of brightness and accuracy depending on your lighting situation. Like that's genius. And it gives you a great experience, one you don't have to think about that works in the background. The 200 megapixel camera, I don't think that's innovation. What's innovation is the sensor that has gone in behind it. Samsung has brought in quad pixel technology autofocus in a 200 megapixel camera. They've also managed to get 8K at 30 frames per second in an incredibly detailed way where you're not cropping in anymore. Samsung is refining those experiences by working hard to perfect them. Honestly, Samsung could have left that main sensor at 108 megapixels, but changed the technology powering it behind it. And it still would have been a better camera and wouldn't have needed to go up to 200 anyway. One from a couple of years ago, the S23 Ultra goes up to 100 times zoom. When you go at those crazy zoom levels, the, the stabilization is terrible. So Samsung innovated a feature called Zoom Lock, 
when you go past 20 times zoom, it actually locks in on the target and stays and holds very stable. Like that's just a user experience upgrade. You don't see that on a spec sheet. You don't get told about that in their marketing material, but it's something that when you're using it, enhances how you're using it. If we move on to the Z series, the video showcased Samsung's manufacturing process for fold and flip. And there was all this machinery that was picking the phones up, dropping them into their caddies, adding on back plates, all of this stuff that's all automated. These are all machinery that cost billions of dollars. Can you imagine if Samsung every single year had to develop entirely new process lines just to make a new phone feel different? I appreciate that eventually you will need new designs as people outgrow the current ones. To completely throw away an entire phone design just because someone on Twitter said so doesn't make financially business sense. So I appreciate that Samsung find other ways to make the phone feel different. And a lot of that, again, is through software. That isn't to say that the hardware doesn't get a change. Samsung had to find a way to close the gap. Now, Samsung in the past have outright said they are not going to compromise full phone functionality just to achieve a, a design that others are starting to put out. And I, I agree. If you lose IPX8 water resistance just so the phone can fold flat, you're not really giving the consumer the experience that they need out of a smartphone th that needs to be durable. So Samsung waited, bided their time, and actually brought out a hinge that closes the gap, maintains its water resistance, feels sturdy and more durable than the last generation. That is what innovation and patience, patiently innovating, is all about. You also have that inner display when it is unfolded on the fold at 1750 nits. And the cover screen on the Flip 5 is also insanely bright. And the operating system on the cover screen is also incredibly intuitive. We've got so much about these that Samsung have put effort into that you don't see on that big spec sheet that everyone puts out there straight away. There's also effort into things you don't quite see. Samsung made the radius of the curve incredibly tight this year with the Fold 5, and that is all there to make sure the crease doesn't get visibly worse over time. Samsung makes sure that it doesn't get wider and doesn't get deeper it's going to stay pretty much as it is out of the box. Whereas other brands out of the box, they give you this experience that looks sensational at first, but it 100% will degrade over time. And that's because there is more points in that display that will be folded in on itself, whereas Samsung have made to keep it as tight and as narrow as possible. I touched on this earlier. The ecosystem surrounding Samsung products is where Samsung are also putting their attention. Like you have to give them props. The, the attention to detail with the Watch 6 series this year, with the classic, with the thinner bezels and the new services with Samsung Health and the heart rate sensors and all the extra fitness and well-being stuff that they've packed into there. The Tab S9, again, whilst it doesn't look different, there is all this extra functionality that having the better processor and partnerships that Samsung have got will enable you. Samsung aren't just in the business of hardware anymore. They make services that connect the hardware together. Samsung Pass, Samsung Health, all of these platforms and services add to your experience of using a Galaxy product, and they all connect. Samsung is starting to put its efforts into refinement. That in itself is Samsung innovating its business practices. For years, I watched Samsung throw everything at the wall. Every single feature they thought of at the time, they stuck it in the phone, potentially before it was ready. Now, I, I still like that they did that because ultimately it's landed us to where we are today. But I think we're in a different place now. Smartphone market has matured and slab smartphones in particular are at their peak when it comes to their design at this current moment. I think Samsung is playing it really smart to keep themselves at a really high level when it comes to polish and refinement and production to ensure that when the next innovation in hardware is ready, They've got happy, loyal customers who will stick with them and trust them when that innovation comes to market. The exciting thing is, I know just personally that over there in Korea, Samsung at their digital city will have hundreds of prototypes of folding phones and future of the smartphone industry floating around. They are trying it. They are testing it. They are getting it ready. It gives me excitement that the future is going to be huge. Samsung have years of innovation behind them. A couple of years of refinement won't stop them from continuing to innovate in the future. That's it for this week. A bit of a different left of field topic. I know I'm just patiently waiting for my foldables, my tab, my watch to arrive. Once they all do, I will flood you with content on all of them. So make sure you subscribe because you don't want to miss anything 
that's upcoming. But between now and my next video, make sure you come follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Did I say Twitter? Oh dear. And I'll see you in my next video. You!